guys, kahuho gatoto here, and welcome yet uh, to another teaching. Uh, before we start, let's pray. Father, we thank you, we give you glory, we bless you for today. We bless you for your word, O oh God, and we thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding, O oh Father. May you enable us to understand what it is that you want us to comprehend concerning you and concerning ourselves in you, our oh Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name. As the subtopic of that is the mental standings of the ancient ones, the mental standings of the ancient ones. And when we begin to speak about a mental standing, we're talking about a present state of consciousness, a state of consciousness. And state, when we speak about consciousness, we're talking about you and you're talking about me. So when we begin to look at that, we realize that a mental state, rather a mental standing, has to do with the present that which exists in the now because consciousness exists uh, within the cosmic or principle of becoming which means that every state of consciousness that we exist in is a state of consciousness that changes and is a state of consciousness that can change so consciousness is malleable consciousness uh, is in one way uh, is one way at one time then in another at another different time so within that existing reality of becoming so that means that consciousness and every existing state something that we must preserve. Notice it's something that we must preserve. I cannot underscore that enough that within our becoming process, and the becoming process is really nothing more than the becoming process of consciousness itself, because as I taught in the lectures concerning consciousness, uh, excuse me, I said the following, that the body, this body, uh, the body is part and parcel of your consciousness and is a dimension of your consciousness uh, via the reality of cosmic, uh, via the reality of consciousness transference, uh, which has to do with the electromagnetic waves, which also has to do with the neurological system as well. So when we begin to speak about that, consciousness, every state of consciousness is becoming and that means that it can be manipulated, it can be altered, it can be changed and back to the body, the body grows, when we talk about growth, we're talking about becoming, so the body grows, that means that the physical dimension of your consciousness undergoes changes as well, it is in one way, yet it becomes another, and in that becoming reality of consciousness within your physical dimension, uh, it is a becoming process, so that that which the physical body is, that which the physical dimension of your consciousness is, can be realized, so becoming is for the actualization of potential, becoming is for the actualization of potential, and that potential that is being actualized is the actual state of consciousness, which is consciousness itself. Now, when we begin to talk about that, we also come back again to the reality of uh, who is a disciple of Jesus Christ. So, a mental standing has to do with the state of consciousness. And within the parameters of discipleship, a disciple is not just a person that is a follower of Christ. It's not just an apprentice of Jesus Christ. Uh, it, is, it is a person that adheres to certain uh, disciplines within the parameters of the reality of the mind of Christ because you are a disciple of Christ when you have the mind of Christ and you are in the mind of Christ. That is, you are a disciple of Jesus Christ when you participate and you are a participant uh, in the consciousness of Christ and you are a partaker of the consciousness of Christ. So when, the number one thing you have to understand is that being a disciple of Christ means being a partaker of his consciousness and being a partaker of his consciousness has to do with being a partaker of the divine nature. Now, as you get into the divine nature, you also become within the divine nature. And in that becoming, eternity becomes in you. Eternity becomes in you. God becomes, but God becomes in you. In himself, God does not become, but in you, God becomes. And in God, you are also created to become. So discipleship in and of itself is a becoming reality. So discipleship is a becoming state of consciousness. When you speak about discipleship, you are also talking about a state of consciousness. A disciple is a being that exists within the state of the consciousness of Christ, within the state of the consciousness of Christ, as much as and as far as, as it relates to humanity and the becoming process of humanity. So a disciple is a student of truth, and being a student of truth, a disciple acquires the knowledge of truth. And, in, and what is the truth? The truth is God himself. So a disciple is a student student of God, not merely a student of God, but a disciple is also a student of the infinite multiple expressions and infinite multiple dimensions of God. So as, as a disciple is someone that exists in a particular state of consciousness, and that state of consciousness is known as Christ consciousness. 
and within that state of consciousness that is known as Christ consciousness which is a specific identity because when you speak about a state of consciousness you are also speaking about an identity so when you begin to speak about an identity it is imperative for us to understand that every identity has an identity in it that is formed every identity has an identity in it that is formed and that identity is for identity uh, identity is for identity formation there is, ide- there is the identity that you have been given within the being of Christ within the being of God and there is the identity that you form that you form within that reality by the operations of the consciousness of Christ and as you become in Christ you become a Christ in Christ as you become in God you become a God in God so all of us we are becoming beings and we become in God and our becoming in God is according to uh, our becoming in God is according to the workings and the operations of Christ consciousness of Christ consciousness because Christ consciousness is also an intelligence and an intelligence that works within us and in us and in the working of this intelligence scripture says work out your salvation with fear and trembling now it says work out your salvation with fear and trembling where there is a working there is an intelligence and that intelligence that is being referred to is Christ consciousness that we are to work out our salvation with Christ consciousness now the working of Christ consciousness is discipleship discipleship is the working of Christ consciousness discipleship is the working of Christ consciousness of Christ intelligence it is the operations and um, it is the operations and functions that are embedded within the consciousness of Christ which has to do with proclivities which has also to do with certain inclinations and these inclinations are, are inclinations of the divine so there is a reality that takes place in the disciple and the reality that takes place in the disciple is a convergence a convergence of uh, his his or her inclinations uh, to the reality of the inclinations of Christ and the inclinations of Christ are the inclinations of the nature of God so we are created in such a way that as we become we are also come to a place where our inclinations are transformed our inclinations are harmonized to a place of um, being Christ centric and being Christ centered in our operations and in our day to day living indeed a disciple lives within uh, the boundaries and parameters of Christ centricness that as we live our life we are living and Christ is the center that everything we are doing we are doing for the glory of God that everything that we do we do it as Christ would do and that is why Paul said that I no longer live that this life that I live is Christ so he was identifying a life and that life that he was identifying is Christ and life is consciousness so you're saying this life that I live is Christ consciousness so every bit of every bit of reality that you see manifesting in you is Christ consciousness so a disciple is a person that exists within the parameter of Christ consciousness and operates within the reality of Christ consciousness now Christ consciousness is not just merely a state of consciousness but it is an identity it is an identity you are a sort of Christ you are a sort of Christ you are a kind of Christ within Christ there are many Christs there are many Christs and you are a kind of Christ within Christ by virtue of being one with him and being one in him you are that body that is Christ and that body that is Christ has infinite dimensions of consciousness and you are a dimension within his infinite within his uh, infinite multiple dimensions of consciousness and you are called to operate as Christ would operate within the mind of Christ that is within the consciousness of Christ and that consciousness of Christ is the consciousness of discipleship it is the consciousness that pursues truth it is the consciousness that has the capacity to digest truth and absorb truth as part and parcel of itself so that it can also become truth so we are disciples to digest truth we are students of truth students of god so any man that says they are a disciple any woman that says they are a disciple in essence they say that they are a theologian now within physical parameters of consideration it is considered that a theologian uh, you know academically speaking we only consider theologians academically speaking but within the school of the spirit that is earth because earth is a school of the spirit and you are in this school of the spirit that is known as earth and within this reality of yourself within the school of, of the spirit that is known as earth you are a theologian and any man that uh, studies any of the disciplines or any of the fields of knowledge within the physical realm that person is a theologian in certain higher considerations because when you speak about considerations within the higher spheres within the spiritual world and within the realms in the realm that is the physical 
realm because our physical realm has realms in it. There are realms in our physical realm and there are realms on our physical realm, in our physical realm. Now, within these realities and these considerations of who a theologian is, every human being is created as a theologian. That means that every human being is created as a student of truth, to study truth, and not only as a student, but as a disciple of truth as a disciple of truth, not only as a student, but as a disciple of truth. So any man that says I'm a disciple of Christ, they're saying that I am a theologian, they're saying that I am a disciple, I'm a disciple of truth, I believe that I am being discipled by the truth, that I am subject to the truth, and that when you see me in my operations, my operations are meant to come from the reality of truth. They're meant to come from the reality of truth because the truth is the realm and the sphere of operation for a disciple. It is the, the truth is the realm and sphere of operation for a disciple. That a disciple is someone that operates within the parameters and boundaries of truth. Now, in the acquisition of the knowledge of truth, and that knowledge of truth is God himself, we know that God is infinite. God is infinite. That means that God is unsearchable. That means that God, within his many infinite names, that one of the names of God is known and unknown. God is also called known and unknown. God is also called seen and seen and unseen. Those are the names, those are some of the names of God. God is also called the unknown and known. God is also called the unseen and seen. Those are some of his names and some of his references within the spiritual realm and within the spiritual world and within uh, the references that the spiritual entities and spiritual beings make about God. They call him the unknown known. They call him the unseen seen. They call him many names, including the one, uh, including the one whose dwelling place is not known, including the one whose dwelling place is not known. That is also one of the names of God. So God is infinite. He's also called infinite in those realms. He's also called unsearchable in those realms. Those are some of his names. So when we speak about a disciple, a disciple is a student of truth. A disciple is a student of God. And a disciple acquires the knowledge of God. But there is a certain mental standing that is required for a disciple to advance in truth. And that mental standing is the mental standing that Socrates had. It is the mental standing that Enoch had. It is the mental standing that Paul had. It is the mental standing that Enoch had. It is the mental standing that Elijah had. It is the mental standing of the ancient, some of, some of whom are not even mentioned in scripture. Because the ancient men and ancient disciples of God, they are not, not all of them are mentioned in scripture. There are many others that are not mentioned in scripture. And these ancients had a specific mental standing. And that mental standing is a mental standing that is referred to as the mindset of a servant. They had the mindset of a servant. Now, the mindset of a servant in relation to knowledge has to do with following, being in a state of awareness that has to do with knowing that you know and you do not know that which you know. Now, that has to do in reference to God and in reference to the gathering of the intelligence of, of God, the interrogation of the intelligence that is God, and the interrogation of the knowledge of species and the knowledge of beings and the knowledge of everything that exists within the physical realm and beyond the physical because infinity is the structure of everything. So that means that everything is known and unknown. And these ancient men had these mindsets. These ancient men knew that they knew and they did not know. They knew that they had knowledge, but they also knew that the knowledge that they have, there is also a knowledge that they are lacking within the knowledge that they have. Therefore, they never, they never claimed to possess full knowledge. They claimed only to have full knowledge in part. And that's where Apostle Paul tells us the following, that now I see in part and know in part, that I see in part and know in part, because as much as uh, he was a man full of revelation, but being full of revelation, he also had this mental standing that he knew and he knew also that he did not know, and he knew that which he knew he also does not know. And that is the place that we are being called to as disciples. That is the sphere of operation of disciples. That is the mindset we are called to operate in. And not only the mindset, but that is also the state of consciousness. We are called to stand in and to operate from. That the moment we begin to gather knowledge concerning anything, that we will not be puffed up. That's why scripture says that love builds up. Love builds up, but knowledge puffs up. You see, knowledge will only puff you up when you lack love. And love is that mental standing of 
knowing fully well that you know and you do not know. And that has to do with humility. That has to do with taking the position of a servant. Lord, you are a son. You take the position of a servant. And when you look at the story of the prodigal son in Luke 11, all the way up to 32, you find that these two sons, both of them, they had two dimensions that are necessary to be had by any disciple. When you look at the son that went and lived a promiscuous life, that son, number one, he had the right identity. He knew that he is a son. He knew that he is a son, but he lacked the right mental standing. He did not have the mindset of a servant. That means he, he didn't exist in this platform of knowing that, yes, I know, but I do not know that which I know. He did not have that mindset. He did not have the mindset of a servant. Then when you look at the other son, he had the identity of a servant. He had the identity of a servant. He had the identity of a servant. And the problem with that is he could not behave as a son because he identified himself as a servant rather than as a son. So that means the following, that he, that the, his, his, that, that the identity within his identity, and that has to do with servant, that that which is sustained, that which is sustained now became that which sustains. And that is a very big problem. And when you look at both of them together, they represent the perfection of a son. And they represent the perfect son. There is someone who is aware that they are a son, but they have the right mental standing. And that right mental standing is the mental standing of a servant, knowing that you know, and knowing also that you do not know. And the Lord was ministering to me about this, and he told me that, this mental standing attracts entities. This, this mental standing attracts ancient beings. It attracts ancient men. And it attracts the great cloud of witnesses. And it opens you up for operations with them, for ministrations with them. It opens you up to receive greater and higher dimensions of knowledge and higher dimensions of wisdom and higher dimensions of understanding. Why? Because that is the mental standing of the ancients. That is the mental standing of spiritual creatures. That is the mental standing of angels. They know, but in their knowing, they know that they do not know. That is why they refer to God as the unsearchable one. That is why they call him the known and unknown. And the moment you come to this platform, to this mental standing of the ancients, we begin to have a claim with the ancients. And the ancients take note of us. Why? Because they take note of men that exist within the parameters of the consciousness that they exist in. Because your consciousness and your, conscious, your consciousness radiates energy. It radiates certain energies through your electromagnetic wave radiations. And these radiations, they're able to be discerned. The vibrations are able to be discerned. And the moment they discern that your vibration is in harmony with you, with their vibration, they come and they begin to minister to you. They come and they, they begin to open themselves up to you. Why? Because you exist in the same mental standing. You see, the standing of your consciousness, then your mental standing determines what you attract. Your mental standing determines what you attract in the spiritual realm. Your mental standing determines what you receive from the spiritual realm. It determines what you receive from spiritual entities. It determines what you receive from God and what you do not receive from God as well. This mental standing is a receptive mental standing. It is a mental standing of humility. And scripture tells us this concerning Christ that even though he was God, he made himself, he made himself uh, into a servant. That is, he knew who he was, but he had the mental standing of a servant. And that's why you see Jesus doing so many things and saying that I do that which I only see my father do because of his mental standing, because of his state, of his inner state of consciousness within his state of consciousness. That there is a state of consciousness, and his state of consciousness was was a state of consciousness that is of sonship, that is of a son, but there is an inner state of consciousness. And that inner state of consciousness is the state of consciousness of a servant, the mental standing of a servant. And because of that mental standing, the operations that the operations of Jesus and the things that he did in his ministry, they are things that even up to up to date, we wonder of them, we wonder how he walked in these things. It's because he established himself and he was established by the Spirit in the mental standing of the ancient ones. And that mental, mental standing of the ancient ones is the mindset of a servant. It is knowing that you know and knowing that you do not know. It is knowing that you know and knowing that you do not know. It is knowing that you know in part and that which you know you also do not know. And that has to do with humility. 
It is knowing that God is unsearchable and being humble and understanding that the knowledge that you have, yes, you know, but there is so much that you do not know as well. There is so much you know, yes, but there is so much you do not know as well. And when you come to that mental standing, you open yourself up. That is a main, that is also has to do with having what scripture calls a simple mind. And a simple mind has to do with an open consciousness. That is what scripture also calls a heart of flesh. That having a heart of flesh is having the mindset of a servant within the identity of a son. Notice what I say, the mindset of a servant within the identity of a son. And the moment that happens to you, and the moment we come to that platform, we come into a platform of ascension. We come into a platform of advancement into higher dimensions of consciousness. We begin to evolve. And remember, it is a state of consciousness that needs to be maintained. Why? Because we exist within the cosmic principle of becoming. Consciousness exists within the cosmic principle of becoming. And that principle of becoming is consciousness itself. And we must guard our hearts with all diligence, as scripture tells us. Now, when he says guard your heart, it means guard your present mental state. Guard your present state of consciousness. In the present state of consciousness, within your present state of consciousness, that is, guard your state of consciousness and guard your the, this and guard your present standing of consciousness. Guard your mindset. Guard the standing of your mind. Guard it so that you do not fall back. Guard it so that you do not revert. Guard it so that you do not end up falling away from where you have. Uh, you do not end up falling away or moving away from the path that you have taken. I hope this teaching has been a blessing to you. If you have questions, uh, as always, please feel very much free to ask. I pray that also if you are uh, that if you've been interested in checking out some of our teachings, especially the lectures on consciousness, you can hit me up. My number is down there. You can hit me up and I'll send you the link so that you can check out the teachings, buy the teachings. And remember, the teachings offer two books. The first one is... Um, Oneness, the reality of reality. The second one has to do with it's a recent book uh, from Reality Series Volume Two, and that has to do with this uh, with the subtitled "The Riddle of God." The Riddle of God. The the subtitle of that book always gives me an issue. The subtleties of the the subtleties of eternity. Yeah, I got it. The subtleties of eternity, and that also is eternity, Volume Three. And I pray. That this teaching has been a blessing to you. And if it has been a blessing to you, please feel free to share it. Remember, there is the state of consciousness and the inner state of consciousness. And the state of consciousness we are meant to have is the state of consciousness of a son. But the inner standing of that consciousness is and has to do with the mindset of a servant. That is the secret to advancement and the secret to learning. Unless we can have that mindset, there are things we cannot learn. Unless we can have that mindset, will not be considered to be wise, will not be considered to be men of understanding. And the moment you have that mindset, we are considered to be men of understanding in higher places of existence. And spiritual entities consider us to be men of understanding. That is why scripture says that we should be as children. And when it says we should be as children, it means have the mental standing of a servant. Have the mental standing of a servant. And the mental standing of a servant opens up the kingdom of God to you. God bless you so much.